Our dear brother and sister, it's so good to be back. And I should say that we have to give thanks to the Lord that, you know, that to, so that we can come back and share the Sabbath school lesson with everyone. And it is so, uh, so glad. I mean, you know, I am so, so excited to come back to, to do the Sabbath school lesson with Pastor Chris from Thai SDA Church in Redland, California. And of course, you know, I hope that you will get the blessing from our Sabbath school lesson that, that we are going to discuss and talk about it and, you know, study about it. And, but before we start our uh, Sabbath school lesson, shall we pray together? Let's pray together. Our dear Heavenly Father, it is uh, so excited to be back and to present the Word of God from our Sabbath school lesson today. And I pray that you will bless our program, our uh, sharing the Word of God for everyone. And also, I would ask the blessing to not just for us, for everyone that who uh, listening and you know have such a wonderful opportunity. So anyway, we want to give thanks to you, Lord, and but we also want you to be with us and with your guidance, with your leading, and with your uh, uh, you know the to give us all the wisdom, understanding, and uh, whatsoever that we need. Please uh, help us to, uh, to do this program together because we want you to get all the glory. Lord, thank you to give us this wonderful opportunity. So be with us and bless us now as I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay, our brother and sister, so uh, as I said that we so happy to be back and you know, it's so exciting especially that we can incorporate together from uh, Bible University of the Universe and uh, Thai SDA Church uh, in, from, you know, in Redland, California, Pastor Chris and we together, we going to be here and discuss our Sabbath school lesson together. And we hope that uh, you have some question uh, to ask and we so willing to, uh, to give all the answer that we can. If we cannot uh, give you the answer today and next time, surely we, we will have the answer for you. So we definitely, uh, we so happy again that Pastor Chris, and I'm so thankful that you are uh, so willing to, uh, to be with us and to, to help this program. So uh, today we, you know, I am excited when I look, uh, you know, from the cover of our Sabbath school lesson for this new quarterly. And the topic, the theme is the promise. And the promise is so exciting to study about the promise of God. And you know, this promise we should really study because we can claim, you know, we can claim this promise from God. And, uh, and just like the Bible uh, saying that the promise of God definitely, surely, will fulfill. Don't, don't you think, uh, Pastor Chris, that the promise of God will fulfill every one of them? Right, sure. Um, you know, if you look at our time, our current time moving forward, we have full confidence that everything that God has promised in the Bible uh -huh. that hasn't fulfilled yet will be fulfilled. 
So, yes. I mean, we always hear this this news or words and uh, thoughts out there outside of us that the world is getting, you know, worse and the world is getting d dangerous. Yes, it's the path that it, it, the world is now going, our society is now going, but where it would end is, I think, uh, an important one to highlight. For us who believe in the Bible, we believe that everything ends in the fulfillment of God's promise, you know, uh -huh. the, the promise in which God will put everything uh, into order. Everything that is in that is disorder will be put in into order. Mm -hmm. Everything that is dysfunctional mm -hmm. will be put into functionality. Mm -hmm. You know, everything that was destroyed by sin will be um, um, will go back to its original form or better form as what God has promised. So we can count on that. And what is the basis? How can we? Uh, is there any guarantee that we can? build our confidence on this thought that, you know, God, I mean, God will still fulfill His promise. Yes, because everything that He promised in the past, He fulfilled it, you know. Mm -hmm. This week, I think, is the uh, is, is a very important week because the world is, is thinking or celebrating about the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That is a fulfillment of the promise that God made in Genesis. Long right, time ago. Long time ago, right after man fell into sin. Mm -hmm. So we can count on what? We can count on God. We can count on Him that everything will be fulfilled. Yeah. Well, the fulfillment, it, like, you know, Pastor Chris says, you know, it might not uh, fulfill in our time, sometime, it's, but it surely will fulfill uh, sometime maybe in the future. But however, we should uh, be able to count on that. So, uh, before let, let, let's check our memory text let's see our memory text for this uh, chapter and of course the topic for this chapter is what happened you know and and uh, it, it's just amazing the the topic you know what happened and so then uh, help us to get into uh, what really happened uh, of this world so that we can understand. Okay, let's see our memory text. Uh, okay, our memory text is found in Genesis chapter 126 to 27. It said, then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness. So God create humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them male and female, he created them. Boy, you know, this uh, memory text uh, is uh, it there, you know, if we uh, carefully uh, to read and to think about it, it has a lot of meaning to it. You know, when, as when God said, God create human being, uh, you know, in his image, and uh, in his likeness. So that, you know, uh, uh, I, I don't know, for me, uh, is so, this is uh, in God's image. There's so many meaning. Let's, let's see. Let's see what are the meaning that we can think of uh, when talking about that God created in our, uh, in his image. Uh, you know, to me, this is a very, very good lesson for us to learn. Okay, for example, when we're talking about in God's image, and, uh, you know, in, in God's image, it means that uh, the likeness of him. So we, 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 we were created just like God. But then we're going to talk about in what way. Of course, you know, uh, here uh, we learn that uh, God is a spiritual being and we are not spiritual being totally. We still, uh, we're different. That's one thing, we di we're different. But when we're talking about in God's image, you know, at, at least for me, that I feel, I feel that uh, 
I belong to God, belong I am His child, and I feel so good. I am somebody, you know. I am somebody when, so, so that one of the meaning. I don't know, Pastor Chris, you can share some of the meaning when we talking about in God's image, you know. What do you what do you feel when we are created just like God in well, different way? Yeah, well, I I feel uh, I'm special in the eyes of God. Uh -huh. You know, uh, there is no better way to describe myself, at least in the beginning. Uh -huh. And when I say myself, not just me, you know, um, me being a human being, uh -huh. you know, it, it gives me confidence and a thought, a feeling that I am important in the eyes of God, right. you know, in, in all these things. Uh, let, let me touch something about the word image because this has been subject of, of discussions, you know, in, in so many, in so many um, biblical discussions or any, um, you know, forums or, um, you know, a theological debate or something. Because mm. I think the word image and likeness is so strong in the Bible. Mm. First, we need to look at um, the the uh, our contrast with other uh, creation of God. You know, there is no other that God created in this within the six days of creation that He said we are is created in His own image, except what it's except humanity, except us. Mm -hmm. So here we can we can find like three dimensions of 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 um, of the creation. Okay, mm. the first one is the divine dimension. Mm. The second one is the natural, you know, dimension, and then third one is the dimension of a human being. You know, these these three are intertwined. They they were together in the picture of what of creation. Mm. Right now, the natural material world, you know, though it conveys order and coherence, you know, the movements of of the universe, sun, moon, and stars, and everything, right? Mm. And you include there, uh, uh, you know, other creations of God like the animals, you know, all nature that we see, nothing um, is described in comparison with human being, mm. because human being was not just created in order, right? God is a God of order, and it ref it is reflected in the creation in the natural creation. But we are created in the image, of, image God. of God. So we are the reflection of the image of God. Now, when we say image of God, I believe that it conveys um, our ability to think, our ability to decide, our ability to judge, our ability to express our own will and our own desire, our ability to. Uh, be creative of things, you know, our ability to um, have our mental capacity develop, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. though God doesn't need to develop his mind, but he has given that capacity for us that the more we use it, it the more it, it, um, it sharpens and also our ability to, to improve our spiritual or work out or live out our spiritual aspect or our spiritual nature. So, having said that, I also believe that man wasn't endowed with the full image of God. Hmm. You know, when, when we say man was created in the image of God, it doesn't mean that everything that God has is with man. Mm -hmm. You know, however, when it comes to what, what God has in him, you know, part of it or par you know, partial of that has been given to man. For example, the the ability to uh, the ability to think and decide and to be wise, you know, uh, those were all given to what to humanity. Yet it's just part of parcel that God could give us because if we will be like totally, completely like God, we will be like God. And actually, that is what uh, Satan has tempted humanity that we will be what we will be like God. So mm -hmm. even though we say that yes, we are. You know, it's a good uh, feeling that we are created in the image of God. We we still need to subordinate ourselves with God, with God Himself. You know, mm -hmm. uh, the word mm -hmm. likeness is kind of different because uh, 
Um, I'm trying to look at the Hebrew word for, for likeness, but the Greek counter, uh, counterfeit of that, or counterpart of that rather, is schema, which is the external form, you know, external form of a man or of a being, right? Like a human being, we are all humans, our nature is what? Being human. Our external form uh, varies in time. For example, when you were a baby, it's different you know than when you are what when you are when you how you look like right now when you compare the picture i don't know if you can say that okay that is my picture unless someone would what would tell you because there is a deviation of what there is a deviation and improvement of of someone's likeness you know and in mm -hmm. an infant will become what a boy and then become adult become yeah middle age and then become um, senior you know and post senior become 90s or hundreds everything what everything develops that is what that 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 changes because that is in the external form now god created us in his own likeness i i believe that even even how we appear you know it conveys who god is you know that's why god when when god became human in jesus christ you know, he chose humanity to be his dwelling place because we are the exact representation of God, not just in the image, but also in his likeness. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, this knowledge uh, from the Bible, from the Bible, is, uh, is so good that I really wish that, you know, uh, people who uh, doesn't know about what we know or doesn't have this knowledge from the Bible uh, because uh, we, we today, uh, especially that we are going to study about what happened, you know, the topic is what happened. What happened what? What happened is that uh, where, where human being coming from or the creator, how God create the whole world or something. You see, we uh, have a beginning, a beginning, that is uh, something that we all should know, that uh, we have the beginning, is, is rather than saying that we are coming from somewhere or, you know, nowhere or something. So our, uh, our knowledge from the scripture is, uh, as we are going to uh, continue to study, that uh, about the beginning of the whole thing. And over here it said, uh, and it said, okay, God is doing to make things right again. Is what, uh, because at first that God creates us uh, in his likeness, but later on, we, as we are going to study because of sin, so that likeness, uh, will be no longer. We'll be no longer and we want to study what happened. Okay, now we let's come to Sunday. Sunday, the topic of uh, third list all the way down. Okay, uh, Pastor Chris, you want to uh, you want to help us in this topic over here? Sure. Um, yeah. If you look at the if you look at the lesson, there is a a funny story that was um, mentioned yeah. here. You right. know, right. That uh, yeah. one turtle stands on the other tar right. turtle, uh -huh. and that turtle stands on another turtle, and right. it's gonna be an infinite, you uh -huh. know, uh, right. turtle way down. Right. So there should be someone that should be in the bottom of everything, right? Yeah. Well, um, it's hard to think that way because, um, you know, we nothing. You know, nothing is like is standing on its own. You know, there should be someone who is the beginning, mm. and that that's why this um, this illustration here, this story here, is kind of funny. Yeah. But when we when we look at the Bible, you know, the Bible uh, narrative, we can find that nature and humanity mm -hmm. and everything, you know, has their beginning in God. You know. There are two verses in the Bible, of course, very important ones. The one that we just read. Then God uh, said, let us make humankind in our own what? Image. That is in Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 27. So God is the beginning 
of our self, you know. And then uh, second one, of course, is the Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. So here, God is the origin of all, of all things, mm -hmm. of everything. Mm -hmm. The natural world as well as us, it all begins in, in God. Now, yeah. having said that, I'm, I'm just trying to weigh, I'm just trying to um, put in my mind and evaluate which, is a, which idea has a better sense, hmm. right? Right. Because we need to be sensible on these things. Right. Is it easier to accept that the world stands on the back of a turtle and that hmm. turtle stands on another turtle and then it's, it becomes an, a bottomless, infiniteless, hmm. you know, turtle, you know, down, way, under, you know, or we are created in the image of what? Image of God, you know. Mm -hmm. We, that our source is what? Is no other than God. Now, let me, let me put this way. It's hard to think and it's impossible to think that the world is on the back of a turtle. Mm -hmm. That's not. I mean, we can mm -hmm. cross that one out because the world mm -hmm. doesn't stand on a turtle, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Size-wise, even your logic says that the world doesn't exist on top of what? Of a turtle. Now, if if it's hard to imagine that, how much more that there's another turtle, you know, underneath that turtle and then mm -hmm. way down. However, if we look at our subs, and this this is the point here, if we look at our subs, you can see completeness. Mm -hmm. You can see um, a complete uh, symmetry, a, a per perfect order. You know, the way our uh, the way our head is is positioned, our ears and our hands. Its position, our feet, and everything that is with us. It only tells that there that it was derived from a perfect image. Right. And that perfect image is no other than God. Mm -hmm. So um, we need to we need to highlight that that there is a perfection, at least in us, you know, the way God has configured us, because our reflection right now, our our looks right now is just a reflection of who God is. And I, I remember um, when we look at the arguments of the existence of God and our own existence, there are three main arguments about the existence of God. And those existence are, I mean, could be seen in His creation. First one is that we exist here and our existence has a cause. Cause, like, mm, mm. there is always a cause of everything. Yeah. Now, if we are if we have this good looking likeness you know in us there should be a cause of that mm. and that cause is no other than god right mm. because mm. he's the cause of everything however if we will use that argument uh, a question would rise so what is the cause of god so assuming our cause is god what is the cause of god mm. then the answer to that is god is an uncaused cause he is the cause but mm. he he never uh, came from from something or someone. He mm. is the uncaused cause, you know. Mm. But when we put together here, and this is a very important. I think this is the uh, the uh, opening statement. This is the most important um, aspect that we need to look at. That ourselves, you know, our human being, our image and likeness, even us and the nature der derive everything from from God. Yeah. So just like uh, you know, in the Bible, uh, that God said when Moses confronted, you know, with God, and right. God said, and Moses said, I, you know, if you want me to go to Egypt, to uh, to you know, to asking for Egypt to let the Israelite people go. And then they would ask, you know, who are you? Who, who are your God, all right? And Jesus said, and God said, I am who I am. So we have no uh, ability to understand that. Uh, well, God is from the beginning. How far beginning? We don't know how far, but it just, it means that God uh, exceeded of his own and we 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 have no way to know uh you know what what i mean how far you know 
right. how far. Th- thank, thank you for bringing that one out because yeah. the um, when God said I am who I am, Y H yeah. W H, we call that yeah. uh-huh. um, as tetragrammaton. You know, Y H W H. There are th- uh, three letters that are involved. That means when you translate that in a literal translation, in English it says I am who I am. Mm. You know, mm. that is a name. That is not a mm. phrase. You know, mm. no. When I ask you, what's your name? Your name is uh, Uncle Visit. My name is Chris, right? Mm. But God's name is I am who I am. And when you put that together, you can read it. You can read it Yahweh or some mm. scholars read it Yehweh um, because of some variations in pronunciation. But when you translate that in English, it's Lord, you know, the capital L-O-R-D. However, the, the, the name who I, I am who I am in which God introduced himself, that is an expression in Hebrew that means I am a self-existent being. Hmm. I have no beginning and I have no end. You know, hmm. I am a self-existent one. So that's, that's a good point that you brought out. Hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, it's just so good that uh, in Genesis 1, was one, uh, one, one. It said that God, uh, in the be- in the beginning, God created, all right, created, and uh, this is so powerful uh, Bible verse because this is how we start uh, the beginning, the existing of everything, because in the beginning God created. You see. Uh, it is so, so good because I, I myself, I always believe, I always believe that, you know, like you're talking about cause and effect and the same thing that, you know, it has to be, everything has to be, has to have the beginning, you know, and uh, that is how special that our uh, Christianity uh, teaching that we have the beginning because when you uh, carefully uh, you know searching or investigate that we know that everything has is beginning has the, the source the coming the origin of everything is no way uh, that you know when you uh, when you are uh, when you don't mention about the beginning, is no way that you can get everything going without the beginning. So I I am so uh, so exciting about knowing that the teaching of Christianity it make a lot more sense than any other teaching, right. because we have the beginning, you know. And now we're going to take a look that beginning. What happened? Okay, what happened? When it said what happened, it has so uh, so deep meaning. What happened? What happened? It let us know, you know, let us know that uh, something happened at the beginning, and that happened. It helped us to know who are we who you are, who are, who am I? And then because of that beginning, it helped me to know not only who am I, where, uh, why, you know, why that I am on this earth, you know? And it also helped me, you know, where I am heading to, where am I going to? So in, we have that beginning, then we have the answer for, you know, why, how, where, all the answer because of that beginning, you know. Okay, so now we going to move to the, uh, it said, in the image of the maker, in the image of the maker. Uh, Over here, there's some question is said that uh, Bible state that God created human being humankind male and female in his own image now uh, it said that 
What does it mean that God created us in His uh, in His own image? In what way are we in His own image? Uh, Pastor Chris has already mentioned about that. And number two, according to the Genesis account, did the Lord make anything else in His own image? And over here is that uh, other than humankind. Okay. Did God make anything else? No, right? No, only, only humankind. Uh, animal would not be mentioned about you know the image of God. Anything, only humankind. So humankind is so special, is so special to God. You know, uh, I feel so special when talking about uh, in the image of God that God created me. Uh, is really so special. Um, now, of course, you know the answer is no. Nothing else uh, in the image of God that He created. And over here, number three is that what else can uh, can be found in the account of the creation of humankind that set the race set the race apart from anything else that. Uh, the Lord has created. Uh, of course, this one is uh, <coughs> we found in Genesis chapter two seven, Genesis chapter two seven, and then we can read on the uh, from eight, verse eighteen to twenty five also. And uh, over here is that he is spiritual being. Of course, you know we have uh, mentioned that that the image of God. Uh, of course, we are not in the dimension of spiritually, because uh, you know uh, over here we, Pastor Chris already mentioned about that, about our mental and spir- spiritual uh, nature, spiritual nature, we reflect in uh, you know in some way our divine creator so refraction refraction of the image of god and uh now we it said that the unique account of how god make woman okay now let's talk a little bit about male and female woman and it is good it's good uh for us to mention that because uh uh any different between uh, man and woman, you know, uh, here is so clear that it saying that, of course, you know, God create woman is using what one of the rib of Adam's rib, right? Right. But but then uh, then the woman that God created is equally to the man, mm-hmm. even though. You know, take it out from well, take it out from the man. Mm-hmm. Obviously, that you know is is the man belong to the man, right? So if we take it out from the man, is just like you know, just like the man himself. So um, male and female, woman and uh, man, uh, the purpose that God want to create woman, uh, as the scripture said, that God want. Adam to have a helper, right? To have a companion, and you know to help him. But it doesn't mean that uh, woman would be inferior or lower than man, not at all. So over here, if you if you want to fight for woman rebel, li- <laughs> so this is the the opportunity. You can use the scripture over here. Because God created man and woman equally, and uh, just you know, be the companion, okay? And uh, now, uh, okay. So Mrs. White uh, has something to say about this in our Patriarch and Prophets, page forty-six about you know if you want to read that about Eve and Adam 
both had the same opportunity to develop their God-given character, uh, characters in a way that would bring glory to Him. You see? Okay. So, uh, so we clear on that, on the woman and man. And now we're going to mention about God and I humankind together. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it was pointed out, you know, this, the uh, concept of equality. Oh. And that concept is also a concept of order, you know. Okay. Order within okay. human relationships. Okay. Um, not just within marriage, you know, not just within family, but uh, we need to look at each other as co-equal, you know, in the eyes of God. Mm. You know, as, as it was pointed out here, that the uh, woman, was, I mean, Eve was not created, you know, was not taken from the head, right? Because um, uh, there is no uh, superiority on the part of the woman over man. Mm. And, and she was not taken on the uh, lowest level of human body, which <laughs> is the feet, because okay. there is no sense of inferiority on the part of, of woman. And, and I'm saying this because we men, Thai, uh, us, uh, we need to look at women in us as co-equal with us, you know. Uh -huh. And also women should look at men as co-equal with what? With them, uh -huh. you know. So uh, this is a this is a principle of what is called order, you know, uh -huh. order. If a man if a man exalts himself above women, right? It's it's a recipe of disorder. Mm -hmm. If a man uh, in feels inferior above wife, you know, if a husband feels inferior above wife, I mean lower than 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 wife, that is also a recipe of disorder. How about if we will exalt women or our wives more than us, higher than us, you know, in our head or above our head? That is also a, a recipe of, of disorder, you know, in the same way as we treat them as lower than us. So here is the principle of order here that we are created co-equal with, 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 um, with women, with, with our spouses, especially in the context of marriage. Mm -hmm. I think if we treat that, if we treat our spouses, you know, our wives in that way, there will be order in your home, and I guarantee that. I uh, again, this is first in first and foremost, this is in the Bible, but even in experience, if we treat each other co-equal, then there will be order within family. Mm -hmm. Good, because God is the God of order, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. And now let's talk about uh, God and humankind together. Uh, you know, God, when God created human being, He want to have a relationship between God and human being, and that relationship is so uh, precious, so precious, and uh, and. You know, so so God want to keep want to keep that precious relationship, and I my understanding and for that also one of the reason that God uh, command uh, Adam and Eve, saying that you know uh, the fruit of the tree. Though in the whole Garden of Eden, you can go and pick and eat it, but only one tree that is not uh, for you to eat. So don't go and pick uh, the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden. We call the 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 what the tree of knowledge of good and evil, right? So this is. Uh, also the testing of uh, for our relationship I mean with God you know between man and God so this is so good to using uh, this testing this kind of testing you know for me you know is the is what what do you think about that uh, right since God is the origin of things uh, right mm. 
and that was spoken well in Genesis chapter chapters 1 and 2 man is under obligation to obey or to fulfill and to trust mm. I would rather use the word trust you know rather than obey the obedience is, obedience is important in the Bible but trust is really significant when we talk about uh, God and human relationship human beings should tr trust in God mm. you know God is the source mm. he is the creator of, of, of human beings and of all things um, and God is the sustainer of all things you know God said you know I have given everything this to you you know you can survive you can live you know you don't need to worry as long as you live within this parameter of of law or, or, will, or will that I'm giving you, you can what? You can live. You know, God, I mean, God has given human beings uh, meat or I would say food, you know, for him to survive and to enjoy life. Um, there is everything that was supplied in humanity. And God is calling human being, especially Adam, you know, to just trust in God, right? Mm. And then he, he, uh, he gave this instruction, you know, in every... Um, in every fruit that you can eat, you can, uh, you can eat everything except the what? The, the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and, and evil. Is mm -hmm. there anything wrong with that? There is no wrong with that fruit. The wrong with that is that it becomes the test of, of, of human's trust in God. Now, God wanted human beings to trust in Him. You know, that is the main purpose of that, being the sustainer. So what God is saying is that I'm just trying to paraphrase here. You know what? I am the source. I am the sustainer. And I wanna I want you to trust in me, but I wanna test you mm. if you really can trust me. Mm. Right? Mm. And then um so God put that test, you know, that te test um in, in the midst of the garden so that he calls a human being to actually to actually trust in him. Unfortunately it didn't happen that way. And men actually prove or had proven that men cannot trust God when men disobeyed the will of what? Of, of, uh, of God who, who put him in the midst of, of the garden. So what is the proof now? Can, can we trust God? Yes, we can trust God. He's the, he's the um, source and the sustainer of everything. The question is, can God trust men? Well, in the beginning, men was untrustworthy and that was that was the beginning of all these conundrums all this chaos this crisis this 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 disorder that is happening in us right now and here's now the beauty it's not in the lesson but here's the beauty when christ, jesus christ came here right he trusted god fully so mm -hmm. that in him you know he represents us and he he gives us the example that we can again human being can be trusted by god because of that full obedience by Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. Hmm. Yeah. So, so from way from the beginning, God and human humankind. Uh, the I'm talking about the relationship is uh, no problem at all from the beginning. You know, uh, <coughs> of course, you know after sins came to this world and changed the humankind behavior, changed the humankind, uh, you know, everything. Uh, it's so, uh, let's take a look at the tree, it said here, at the tree, at the tree. Uh, <coughs> it said, and the Lord God commanded the man saying, Of every tree of the garden thou may freely eat, but of the, uh, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that uh, thou eat thereof thou shalt surely die. So this is the command of God uh, not to eat the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And over here it said this test provided Adam and Eve 
with an opportunity to exercise their free will. So this again, that because God so loved humankind, and so He allow humankind to have a free will, right? To have a free will, and and uh, and of course, you know this uh, this. You know, the humankind can choose to respond to this free will. Can choose that either to, like uh, Pastor Chris said, to trust or to obey God, or to distrust or to disobey God. So, this is also indication indicated that God is the God of love, uh, the God of love, and uh, this is a True love. Let, let, this is a yeah. true love. Go ahead. Let, let yeah. me ask you a question. Um, if I will ask you, how do you describe God? Is God a God of permission or a God of restriction? Oh, God of restriction? Yes. Is He a God of permission or a mm. God of restriction? Mm. That is uh, our God. God is, uh, let me see, is you see God in a way that he is restriction, but he would not uh, you know he wants you to to define you know his restriction you know he wants humankind to to themselves to 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 Define that restriction, the, the you know that draw the line, whatever. He doesn't want you yeah. to uh, define the restriction because the restriction yeah. is good for you. Yeah, is that right? Yeah, the restriction. Well, if we trust in the Lord as our Creator, uh, you see, God, way from the beginning, we know that you know we uh, haven't mentioned that, but uh, you know. When God created uh, this world, He everything, He said good, good, good. Until He created human being, He said very good. So that is a perfect situation uh, with the human being, and He, at, at that point, He know that the the relationship between. Uh, the beginning of that good relationship between humankind and God because God created is so perfect and that perf uh, the concept of perfection is in humankind you know so there's no problem that human at that point human human will trust the Lord completely so uh, so that's what I just mentioned about restriction that is it depend on how uh, what kind of situation uh, at that point humankind totally trust God and uh, it, when you trust God totally there's no that you don't even think about the restriction you know at all so uh, and if you look at the Bible you know God said go ye and multiply you know there's no restriction there you can eat every uh, every fruit of the tree right there's uh, no restriction here uh, so we can find what's called a broader permission and limited restriction mm. while we are saying this because many people even christians much more with unchristian people mm. you know they only look at the restriction that god has given they even question god you know what if god didn't give this restriction then man didn't f uh, fall into sin you know that's that's not that's not true because um in, in him being a holy God, being a just God, and being a wise God, he knows everything, right? His mind doesn't have no limits, so there should be a restriction of everything. Mm. And in the, in the picture of Genesis, of the creation account, we can see a broader permission. You know, he permits everything for human being to enjoy and to exercise, right? Mm. But there is only that very, very limited restriction. So I want, you know, the listeners and the viewers to think about, you know, this principle that we should not, we should not look at God as a God who restricts you. You know, if there is a restriction because this is bad for you, 
as the law of nature and a law of divine being, you know, entails. But everything that God has given us is free for us to what? To use. There is a broader sphere of, of um, permission that God has given us. So we should not look at God in the the way we paint him in our mind as God who restricts, mm. as, a, as a God of do nots, you mm. know. He's mm. a God of does, you know. You do these things and you will what? You will enjoy your life to its fullness. Okay. Well, then we, let's see, we discuss about the relationship between God and humankind. Now, we want to talk about the breaking of the relationship. Now, what happened? You see, uh, the Bible teaching has all the information about uh, the, the, the beginning of humankind, which is God created humankind. And, and also God created humankind a, a perfect situation. But now what happened? Breaking the relationship, it means that like we mentioned, trust and distrust, obey and disobey right so now we mentioned about that the, at the tree of life i mean at the tree of uh, knowledge of good and it was that god uh, god said don't even uh, eat the fruit from that tree now if you do what happened if you do then you break the relationship with god and not only that God said you surely will die, right? So uh, now, breaking the relationship uh, with God is, let's, uh, let's, read, let, let's read Genesis chapter 3, word 1 to 6. It said, uh, now it said, we tend to believe people we know and instinctively distrust those whom we do not okay now and if naturally uh, would have distrusted satan uh, furthermore any direct attack against god would have make her defensive what step uh, then did satan take the bypass if natural defenses uh, this is very interesting, very interesting. Let's, uh, Pastor Chris, can you, uh, can you read from the Bible for us? Genesis chapter 3, 1 to 6, please. Okay, so it says, Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree this desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Mm. Okay. So that's the story. That how the relationship between God and humankind breaking because Satan is tempting Eve to disobey and to distrust God. And uh, so, you know, uh, so many times that we might have some question, question that uh, who should take responsibility between Eve and Adam uh, when Eve, uh, you know, trusted in Satan and eat the fruit of the tree that you know and uh so you want to make some comment on that between eve and adam i want to make a comment on that uh, yeah. um so before we look at genesis chapter 3 there is a sequence that the bible presents on 
the narrative of creation of human being and that is in chapter 2 so mm. I want you to look at um, chapter 2 verses 17 and 18 okay and he, here is the sequence of how men and woman or Adam and Eve were both created on their succession because this would explain the concept of responsibility and accountability and here it goes as I read in verse 17 it says but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat for in the day that you you eat of it you shall surely die mm. now the question is to whom God is talking here is it both of them is it Eve or is it just Adam mm. let's look at verse 6 uh, 15 it says then the Lord God took the man, so that is Adam, and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you know, meaning Adam, singular form, saying, God, uh, saying, of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. So instruction is clear for who? Oh, for for Adam, Adam, right? Mm -hmm. There was a personal connect. There was a personal variable, explicit uh, explanation and instruction from God it's not even it's not even that God is trying to hide something to Adam you know word for word he said it right so the instruction was clear and the understanding of Adam you know that understanding of Adam beings not so marred with sin yet at that point must be so clear he should have grasped it you know he should have it should have be so crystal clear on his side on mm. his on his mind what the instruction of God is mm. now in verse 18 it says and the Lord God said it is not good that man should be alone all right I will make him a, a helper comparable to him mm. so here's the thing why Adam is accountable more than Eve mm. first because he's the head of humanity that's another subject okay right mm. but second the instruction of God was so clear to Adam to Adam and yeah. the instruction was even given before Eve came into into being now okay. i want to make a further point here because where the responsibility and accountability of adam um, was and he failed on that being the first adam in romans chapter 12 paul apostle paul sees that concept in saying jesus christ is the second adam in which where adam fell you know everything was so clear in him but he still fell now Jesus Christ was also sent us. The plan of salvation was clear on his par part. And what? What Adam failed, Jesus Christ what? Reinstituted. You know, he put it back. That's why he is the Savior and he is the second Adam. Mm, mm, good, good, good. Okay. So uh so we got okay, we got breaking the, the relationship and then we got the the redeem of this relationship through Jesus, right? Jesus and uh, the redemption is that uh, through Jesus, Jesus came down to this earth and to die for our sins. And that is the redemption. That is the to, uh, to patching up, to patching up the breaking relationship between humankind and uh and and god so uh and so and he's coming by the way his coming is mentioned in genesis 3 15 mm. right in that chapter when man fell into sin mm. and and i mean humanity fell into sin god didn't wait too long for him to give the promise of the coming messiah mm. right genesis 3 15 that is what's called proto Evangelion, the first statement of evangelism in which god promised mm. that the messiah will come and save humanity where Adam you know fell mm. because of disobedience yeah and that is the first statement promise, of evangelism right the first promise from the scripture right yeah right? okay so and would that I mean that promise already fulfilled right it was fulfilled when Christ died on the cross yeah okay so we can say that the promise of God will fulfill uh, of course, you know, sooner or later it might not be Im uh, immediately, but it will be sometime maybe in the future. So we, uh, we will conclude uh, this lesson. Uh, now it said here that God created us 
in his own image so that a loving fellowship could exist between him and us. Although the entrance of sin uh, chattered the original union, God seeks to restore this relationship through the plan of redemption. Life for us as dependent uh, creature take on true uh, meaning and clarity only when we enter into union with our Creator. So this is the conclusion of this lesson. So we learn the create uh, God create everything from the beginning. Okay, so we shall continue to study our uh, Sabbath school lesson chapter 2 and we hope that we will see you on next Thursday and thank you for being our audience and see you later next time.